Well, hello and welcome to another amazing guest interview here on the Profit With Law podcast. I'm your host, Moshe Amsel, and I have a uh, repeat guest, but not guest, guests with an S on it, uh, because it's the dynamic duo couple, uh, April and Tyler Roberts from Nomos Marketing. Uh, I had so much fun uh, getting behind the microphone and speaking to them the last time that I said, hey, let's go and do this again. So December 8th, 2022 was when we published that episode, Finding the Right Marketing Campaigns for Your Law Firm with April and Tyler Roberts. It is episode number... 356, 356. You can find it at profitwithlaw.com forward slash 356. You may even want to hit pause, go listen to that episode and come back to listen to this one if you so choose. But we're not going to repeat ourselves from the last episode and we're going to jump in and dive into what is working today for law firm owners. Um, and when I posed the question in the green room to April and Tyler, um, I basically said, hey, what are your clients asking? What are your prospects asking? What is the thing that is on the top of the minds of our law firm owners today when it comes to uh, when it comes to marketing? And um, Tyler said, well, the biggest question we're getting is how do I get higher quality leads? And I know that for some of you, the question might be, how do I get leads at all? Uh, but many of you, no matter how you're trying to get leads, probably are getting people who are wrong practice area, uh, not quite ready to hire, um, or uh, they you know, don't need an attorney at all. And they're calling you to sell you the latest uh, employee retention credit. Um, so we want to unlock and unleash the answer to this question in today's episode, which is basically, let's get you some really high quality leads. April and Tyler, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. We're excited to be back. It is absolutely my pleasure. Love talking to you guys. Um, I had the chance to meet you in person at, what was it? It was a Max Law Conference, I think, yes. uh, is where we where we met. Um, and uh, I've been able to send some clients your way. Um, so I uh, I really, I believe in, in what you guys are doing. Um, and I love the conversations that we have. So our, our listeners are your clients or potential clients, and they're challenged with this thing. And and uh, basically what I wanted to know is what is the secret sauce? There's got to be something because PPC, we know you got to, you know, and for those who don't know, it's Google pay-per-click. That's to, to get your ads showing in Google search when somebody searches for you um, is a tough game to win. Uh, you need to spend a lot of money. You need to be, you know, as, as Tyler said, you need uh, in the green room, you need to be a top three spender, um, to really be relevant, um, in, in that, in that realm. SEO, SEO is a long-term game. You got to invest for a long, t long period of time <clears throat> to have a chance to show up first in Google. And then there's no guarantees. You could spend all that time, all that money, and you're just on the first page, but you're all the way at the bottom. So, um, SEO and PPC are not necessarily the places where our our small law firms should be spending their marketing dollars, but we still need leads. So what's the answer to this conundrum? So I think that it's really easy to overcomplicate it. Um, SEO and pay-per-click are great marketing strategies. I think for every law firm, they need to do some level of SEO, but there's a high expectation for those um, those services that if I put a little bit of money into SEO or a little bit of money into pay-per-click, I'm going to get an immediate result. And what we've found, you know, over the course of the last five years of doing this is that a lot of people are just missing a really solid foundation for capturing leads and following up and nurturing them. So we've really been taking a step back and looking at like, well, what does that foundation look like and how can we help solo and small law firms be 10 times more effective with their marketing and maybe they aren't number one, you know, on Google, or they're not showing up at the top of the paid ad results. Um, but are there other avenues in which we can direct traffic to their site? And then once that traffic gets on their site, we can kind of like qualify those leads um, and give them an opportunity to, to give them their information and then to also like market to them on the back end. So um let's let's dive into this a little bit more. What what does this look like? Give me an example of a law firm. Tell me the practice area. How would this show up in real life? Yeah. 
I think a perfect example would be, let's say, an estate planning lawyer, um, because we see a lot of times with estate planning that there's like the initial outreach, but then people aren't ready to buy. And then there needs to be that follow up on the back end. And unless someone's super diligent about manually following up, they're just going to end up losing that lead or that lead's going to come back like a year later and they're going to have the same conversation that they had previously had. Um, I think the same can go for pretty much any practice area. Obviously, the timelines differ between the um, you know between different practice areas. Um, but really, what we look at is like, well, what's going to convince someone to choose this small or solo law firm over all of the other competitors? And part of that is like the foundation, like we mentioned, like your Google My Business and your website, like you're just your online presence. Like, do you have a really solid online presence, like a clear headshot, testimonials? case studies, you know, just the things that are going to help someone develop trust in your brand and like build credibility and authority. So I think there's that foundational aspect of it. Um, but the thing that we're probably the most excited about in terms of like developments and marketing, um, you know, as we're looking at like all the changes, right? Like you've got Twitter turning into X, you've got ChatGPT, you've got um, Instagram threads, like the platforms are changing every day, but like the basics of good marketing haven't. And one of the things that we love uh, to talk about is like building a lead list. So like, how do you get people's information in order to market to them through email or through text messaging um, and to continue to have that follow up with them? Because if you can capture that information, then you can kind of control the lead flow. You can control that list. Um, whereas like with these different marketing platforms, you're jumping from one to the next and the audience differs. Um, and so, you know, to kind of, put this in more concrete terms, what we're starting to develop are lead magnets for solo and small firms. So let's go back to the estate planning firm example. Um, rather than just having someone like a call to action, just to, to call the law firm, because that's kind of a big ask for somebody. We now have a piece of content that someone can trade their information in order to obtain. So they could add in like their email address and then they can, you know, preview a webinar series or a PDF checklist or an ebook, something that's going to help educate them about, um, you know, where they are and like how to get to where they want to go. And then on the back end of that, you can, you know, market to them through email or through text messaging, however you want to, to contact them. Um, and the beautiful part about that is you get to automate it. So now you can just send automated messages, you know, throughout the course of a few weeks, a few months, a few years, whatever it may be, um, whatever's appropriate for that practice area. All right. So the, my, my first question is on our, on my website, right? I might have two different types of people come into my website. I might have somebody who has a burning desire to hire somebody right now. They're checking me out and they want to get, they want to move forward. And then there's probably most of the people coming or kicking the tires, looking, trying to find answers to questions. Um, and, and they, and they, they don't know if they need an attorney or they don't know if they're ready to hire an attorney, but they're beginning that process and somehow they got to my website, right? Um, the lead magnet is a perfect solution for person number B. But if somebody comes to my website and they want something right now, the lead magnet is going to delay that discussion and probably make it harder for me to get them as a client than easier. So are you doing both? In other words, are you still having the book of consult on the website and you have the lead magnet? How do you how are you putting that on the website to begin with so that I'm not losing one or the other? Yeah, I, I mean, that's a great question. I think the primary call to action is always going to be contact the firm or schedule a call because um, that's what you want people to do. And if you have a good website, then it should encourage people to do that and they should feel comfortable doing that. But like I said, there's some people who just aren't ready for it. Um, so we call this like our secondary call to action. It could be lower down on the page. It could be, you know, nested underneath like, um, you know, a menu item like resources or something like that. Um, it could be a pop-up form, um, just something to capture someone's information if they were on the fence about hiring you. And then for the ones that are, you know, looking to hire someone right away, it's like, it's just free value. So you're automatically positioning yourself as an authority figure you're giving value and now they feel, you know, number one, that you're the, the person who can help them. But then number two, if they get this information, it's high quality, there's a sense of indebtedness to you. And so like, why not hop on the phone and have that consultation? Yeah. Um, I love that. Maybe like an exit intent pop-up or something on the sidebar or something like that, where, um, 
you're now creating this offer. So just to, to take it back for a second, I, I'm sure our listeners are, are quite knowledgeable in all the marketing lingo, but lead magnet is where they're exchange, they're, there's an exchange of value, but it's not dollars and cents, right? So they're, they're giving you their contact information, whether it's an email, a phone number, or both. And in return, you're giving them something for free, which could be a training. It could be a, a, a some sort of uh file that has that they can print out that has a checklist or or some other um, explanation could be an an electronic book um, or anything like that right yeah exactly we've been doing a few different things we've been doing a lot of ebooks recently for ourselves as well as our clients Um, so yeah I think the the biggest thing is really providing value and I think it goes back to Really what we believe in here at Nomis Marketing is making the law more human, making it accessible, helping people in their community. So I think a lot of times people will tell us like, oh, I got all these leads, but they're not good. They're not ready to sign today. But it's like, those aren't bad leads. You just need to keep them engaged so that when they are ready, whether that be three months from now, six months, 12 months, they're going to come back to you. You're going to stay top of mind because in the meantime, you've provided value to them. And I think that's really what's super important to do here. Because I mean, I think about ourselves. I mean, we're not always ready to, you know, pull the trigger on something, even things that involve attorneys, you know, it's like we we need to do estate planning. We haven't done that. Um, A reminder, we should do that. Um, But I think that, you know, if we're constantly being reminded of that and being provided value, we're going to go back to that person because pretty much very few people are doing that. I don't want to say no one's doing it, but very few people are providing that extra value um, in the legal space. And we just need to keep them engaged. Yeah. Interestingly, one thing that, I mean, we're in in the middle of creating this and and implementing it ourselves for my business, but um, my gears are turning and I think a quiz funnel would work really well for somebody like an estate planning firm, probably any law firm, but um, basically where you ask a series of questions for them to determine, you know, like, do I need a, do I need an estate plan or do I need an estate planning attorney at all? And and then they add, answer those questions. But the really cool thing is, is that now I might have the information, wh- whether they're single or married, whether they have kids, whether they have a net worth, whether they have an intention to pass that on to a future generation. I can ask some basic questions in that quiz. And then all my follow-up marketing can be different depending on what their responses were. So much more relevant emails going to them, much more personalized for where they're at, um, which you know everybody is putting people on their email list and sending emails out. So how do I, how do I get noticed? Um, and how do I get somebody reading my stuff? Um, you know, if it's much more personalized to their situation, uh, you know, like if I'm, I'm on the mailing list of three estate planning attorneys and one of them sends an email with a subject line that says, you know, um, how to leave a million dollars to each of your kids. That'll be very relevant to me, but not relevant at all to somebody who doesn't have kids. Right. So if they knew that, I would get that email. Somebody without kids would get a different, you know, subject line in their email. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Absolutely. I mean, I think that's something as we're building this out that we're really looking at, you know, building that foundation and then breaking it down. I think a lot of times I will say people get so caught up in not doing it unless they can break it down into all of the little buckets, which. I mean, yeah, those are ideal, but sometimes you just have to get started and then you can break it down. And that's really what we've been focusing on with clients. And then sometimes you don't know how to break it down until you start seeing what comes in and then being able to kind of pivot as it happens. Yeah. So we call this list segmentation. And what's great about it is if you create something that's like a universal piece of content, like let's just say it's like the the barrier you try to overcome is that you're in a market where people don't trust attorneys. Like most people have never hired one and they don't know what to expect. And so basically your piece of content is just like, hey, here's what to expect. And so you're helping them overcome that initial objection. And again, it's super broad. And all of your email marketing on the back end is kind of tailored to like reinforcing that message and also just sharing things like case studies and like testimonials, like things like that. Um but what's really f- fun for us is like, well, like, what if you do a second 
piece of content, like a webinar, or you do some other kind of PDF checklist. And so you take this broader audience and you start to narrow it down over time. Um, we've been doing this internally with different webinar series to see like, well, what's our lead list like engaging in, you know, so we have all these people who've downloaded like an ebook or a workbook or something like that. Um, but now we're going to do a webinar series on like websites. So maybe 15 people, you know, out of 200, 300 sign up for that. So now we can put them on a drip campaign or send a follow-up sequence to them. That's more specific. And so you can continue to like tag and classify your, your leads in different buckets um, as time goes on. But like April's absolutely right. Like I think the, the biggest thing is like just get started with a really solid piece of content that can serve all of your potential clients and then just start working it from there. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that approach. Um, basically, what I'm hearing you say is that uh, if we get too... Uh, we get these great ideas, but then when we go to implement it, there's so many answers we need to give and so many choices we need to make that we end up not even getting started. So instead of going to the Cadillac, the like, you know, the thing that's going to cater to everybody and, and segment everybody the way that that's ideal, um, let's start with something more general, just start capturing everybody. And then we can offer lead magnets that are specific to somebody in a specific bucket and because they downloaded that lead magnet, they've identified, they self-raised their hand and said, hey, this is for me. So now they're in this segment. And ultimately, when we have enough of those going where we know where our people are falling and what questions they're asking, we can then at that point, go to the next stage, which might be a quiz funnel or something like that, or it might not be necessary because we've got so many of these lead magnets built out. And depending on which one they need, they're going to they're gonna grab the one that makes sense for them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's spot on. And I think, um, you know, I like as you were saying that it, it takes me back to, you know, all different forms of marketing. I mean, I know we're talking about like, you know, lead magnets and how to really make sure that we're engaging that list of leads that we have. But I think with any type of marketing, that's something that we really see as like a recurring trend is a lot of people getting hung up on um, just moving things forward until they think that it needs to be 100% done. And I'll always go back to um, the phrase done is better than perfect. Um, and it's like, you're going to grow. I think about our own website. Like we're talking about this all the time. It's like, oh, we need to update these photos. We need to do this, that. It's like, but it works. It's there. Like, yes, we want to update it and we will update it this year. But it's like, don't let that hold you back from not having a website or not having a Google My Business, not having a lead list. Like you just need to get started. And then once you start, then you can really break it down for how it's going to work for you and your clients. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and when I look at this idea of having something for free that somebody can exchange their, their information with me for, you mentioned having a follow-up. Um, what is, what's the biggest challenge around this? Is it, is it, what do I write in those follow-up emails? Is it how long of a sequence am I doing? Like, I mean, if I'm in estate planning, for example, I'm guessing that that can go on for a year or more that, that continuous follow-up, right? So in order for me to release this, do I need to have 52 emails written? Like how, how does that, how does, how does it work? you know, structurally and, and, and what's the bare minimum somebody should have set up in order to get started? Yeah. I mean, that's an awesome question. So if you're ambitious, there's three, um, kind of tiers that I would do. So one is kind of like an initial sales sequence. So this would go out over the course of like a week or two weeks where it's like that hard hitting, like sales messaging where it's like, Hey, you downloaded this ebook or you watch this webinar. I want to get you on the phone to talk about your situation or like you've completed this quiz. Sounds like you could really use our services. You know, when's a good time for us to talk? Um, you know, you kind of like set the email tone almost like a manual follow-up, but it can be automated and send people to your, your calendar or to, you know, your intake system, whatever it may be. Um, and then the second piece of that would be kind of like your like short-term nurture sequence. So this would be more marketing related. So maybe over the course of, you know, a couple of weeks to a month. Um, and basically what you're saying here is like, hey, welcome to X law firm. This is what we do here. Second email is like, my name's Tyler. Um, this is why I started my law firm. Third email could be, hey, we've helped people like you. Here's some case results that we've gotten for clients. 
you know, fourth one testimonials and kind of so forth. Right. So it's a little bit more of like providing like social proof, um, talking about the client's specific problem, reinforcing, you know, the things that you're talking about and like the piece of content that they downloaded. Um, and I think beyond that you do like your year long, like long-term nurture sequence. And this is where I said, again, like this is like super ambitious, but, um, this would be more of like your newsletter format, uh, where it's like, Hey, here's a blog post that I wrote. Here's a video that I just produced. Here's a podcast I listened to that I thought you'd get a lot of value out of. Um, and of course you could do these manually. That's, that's what we do. We, we have everyone on a short-term nurture sequence. And then we do, um, like monthly newsletters after that. And those are always going to be like fresh and like written like that month. Um, but you could go into it with like some evergreen content and just maybe do 12. So all in all, you're not talking about like one email every week. Um, but you're talking about like staggering the messaging where you do, you know, three or four, like really fast. You have like maybe, you know, six to eight that are going to be more like short term, like marketing nurture related. And then you're going to have like 12 that are going to be that, that year long nurture sequence. So that's kind of how I would look at it in terms of structuring it, um, but where we're getting started with our clients that are starting to do this is we're doing that, that shorter term nurture sequence. So that initial ask, then like a little bit about the firm. Um, and then we just do the manual uh, email and mar marketing newsletters on a monthly basis after that. Now, what's your view on email address versus phone number? Um, I know, and I, I'll, I'll lay this question up with what I, what I know from the marketing industry. I know that the marketing industry says the more questions you ask them to answer in that form, the less submissions you're going to get. So there's one school of thought that says, don't even ask them their name, just get their email address. That's the only thing you ask them for. And you get the most possible people signing up for it. Another school of thought is I don't need a thousand people on my email list that are not going to become clients. If they're not willing to give me their name, their email, their phone number, they're probably not that serious. And therefore... I don't need them on my email list at all. So, um, and where I'm going with this is if I had their phone number, we can outbound dial them. And email is a great form of marketing, but we all know that emails go unopened, they go undelivered, they go into the spam or into the promotions or whatever. Like they, they get into a place automatically where somebody may never even see it. So if I'm relying 100% on email, that itself might be a problem. Um, and I know in my business specifically, um, I started shortly after after I, I started niching on, to, on the legal industry specifically, um, I made a decision that we are never offering anything without collecting a phone number. Um, and that's what we do here internally is we put, we put at, at a minimum name, email, and phone number. But we also sometimes put firm name, firm size, because we... We want it. I mean, if it's like if you go to um, Microsoft and you say, hey, I'm interested in attending this webinar, they're going to give you a form with, with 10 fields in it. They could give a crap if you're going to walk away, because if you want to if you want to join this thing, you're going to answer all the questions I need and my, you know, my, my marketing team needs. Right. Um, so I kind of feel like it almost presents a better, like, like a, a more professional look when I'm asking more questions than when I'm not specifically in, in the, the, the market that I'm marketing to. Um, so this is a very long question to basically ask you, like, where, do you, where do you stand on this conversation? Should your, should people, when they're setting this up, just be getting an email address or should they be also asking for a phone number or maybe even additional questions related to estate planning to get some information up front when, when we're doing this exchange of value? I feel like you definitely need basic information. I mean, a name, a phone number, an email address are like a non-negotiable to me. Um, I think like the bonus is, you know, tell me more about your case, like, you know, demographics and all of that. Like that's helpful. And a lot of times forms will allow you to make things where they're um, required um, before you can actually submit. So, you know, obviously I don't think making 30 things required is good because then like 
I get frustrated myself when I'm filling out stuff. I'm like, oh, forget it. I'm not going to do that. But I do think it's important to have some of that basic information. Um, I think when it comes down, you bring up like phone numbers that you're always going to ask for that. We like to have phone numbers too, personally. I think that you have to really look at um, the way that the law firm runs. I think, you know, the back end of everything looks different for each client. And so figuring out what it is that y'all do at your firm communication wise, um, what's going to be the easiest thing. The the first thing that came to mind when you said phone number is I'm like, well, you know, most all firms aren't even answering their phones. You know, I go and listen in. I'm like, good God, they're not going to call people back. So it's like, could you get them in an email funnel? I think you have to kind of take a step back and reevaluate as a law firm owner, like, where do I fall in this? Like, am I great at answering the phone? Am I great at getting a phone number and picking up the phone and calling them? I think that might be a way to go too, um, if they're not engaging through emails and all of that. But I think the majority of the time, email is going to be the easiest way to have a law firm, you know, stay top of mind with a large lead list. Yeah, I I do think that um, you bring up a, a really good point in in that you know are you going to make the phone call? I also think there's an argument to be made that the the lawyer him or hers or herself should not be the one making the phone call. Um, it really um, sends a message that you're bored and have nothing better to do than to call people who downloaded a free thing off your website and check in on them. Um, some people might look at it and be like, oh, wow, they called me. Uh, they must really think a, a lot of me. And, you know, like you might get some of that, but you're going to get a lot more people who are like, I'm not sure if I want my attorney to be the one who's calling, uh, you know, uh, people off the Internet. Uh, so you definitely need to have somebody there to make the calls. Also, uh, I think that's the way to go. Um, but imagine the difference in experience between somebody who downloads something and they're getting an email sequence versus somebody who downloads something and the very next day get a phone call from the firm saying, hey, we noticed that you downloaded XYZ. You shared your phone number with us. We hope it's okay that we're calling. Did you have any questions that we can answer? You know, like it's a completely different experience and it's something that that probably nobody's doing, right? Like there's, if, if we look in the marketplace and you, you're like, well, we know that 66% of law firms are not answering their phone. We could probably estimate that 95% of them are not proactively calling somebody who submitted a form on the internet. So that's one way to really set yourself apart from somebody else. And if you don't have the capacity to make those calls, then do you even have the capacity to answer the call when the person who's in your email sequence picks up the phone and calls you? Like, what is the intention of that sequence? It's to get a client. So I kind of feel like, yeah, you need to know where you are, but you also need to, this is a question that happens even before the funnel, right? Like, why are we doing a funnel to get your phone to ring more, but you're not answering it right now. So let's solve that first. I, you know, when we talked about like, investing in SEO and pay-per-click at the beginning of the episode is that's like the perfect point, right? There's so many solo and small firms that they don't have someone who is dedicated solely to intake and they're scared to outsource intake to, you know, a third party. And so we see, a, I mean, we see this with criminal defense quite a bit where the attorney's cell phone number is on the website and they're willing to text back at any, you know, any moment to make sure that whoever's reaching out to them gets an answer right away. And what's great about doing these like automated funnels is that you can get, you know, the, the phone number immediately. And I think this goes back to practice areas. Like for an estate planning firm, email may be great. For criminal defense may not be the best option. You know, if you get a phone number, can you use that to send automated text messages? Mm -hmm. You know, can you use that to, to make it a call, you know, within the hour of them downloading it? So I think that, um, there's a lot that goes into like how you would want to structure, but I agree with April. It's like, get that basic information and then you can decide how you want to use that as time goes on. If you have a really bad open rate with your emails, but you have everyone's phone number, then just pick up the phone and start calling them or start texting them. There's, there's multiple ways to reach out to them. Yeah, but I, I definitely agree, Moshe. And I think this, I mean, we talk about this when people, you know, come to us and, you know, especially after we've been working with them for a few months, they're saying, hey, like, I'm I'm just not getting 
the quality leads, but then we go and listen to their phone calls. And I look and I'm like, over half of your phone calls aren't being answered. Like, no wonder this isn't working. Like, or have you called these people back? And then, you know, they haven't. And so I think you really like, as people are going, figuring out what is the best marketing for them. Cause I mean, truthfully, there's a million different ways you can do it. Um, I think if you don't have the back end figured out of how you're going to, who's going to answer the phone, who's going to convert these people into clients, there's no point in doing any of this because then you're just going to have even more leads and then they're, they're going to be trying to sign up, but then how, how do they sign up? And so I think this is definitely a, a more sophisticated way for law firms who do have that customer service down pat and they know exactly what the nurture campaign is for a client to continue to build on that and grow that list. But I think if someone's, you know, listening and they, they don't know who's going to answer their phone call, like, but I think there's some other steps to do before getting to this step, um, just to make sure that you have that back end foundation built. Yeah, absolutely. I and and it's really important for us to to highlight that because um, so many times you know we're we're trying to solve a problem we don't even have. Uh, you know, like, uh, oh, I need more leads. I need more leads. Why? Because I need more clients. But your phone's ringing off the hook with leads. Um, you need more clients because you, you're not doing a good job with what am I doing with the leads when they come in? So you really have to make sure you're, you're solving the right problem when you're going down this road. Um, th these lead funnels are, are great. Um, and, and the follow-up, the automated follow-up is great if you're doing a really poor job right now of, of being able to get somebody from lead to sale. Um, but it's also a problem because you're now getting people even closer to the sale. But if you still can't get them across that threshold, um, then what are we doing, right? Like it's a complete waste of effort. Uh, so you really need to know where where you're at. And I mean, that some of this is like, this is where I come in, right? Like you need to work with somebody who's going to help you understand the value of hiring somebody and delegating this to them. Um, the reason you're not answering your phone is because you're too busy to answer your phone. So you need to have someone else answer your phone. Um, shout out to my friends at Smith AI, a reception answering service. Uh, every single phone call should be answered by a live receptionist. Go to profitwithlaw.com forward slash Smith AI, uh, and you can get whatever promotion we're running right now with them um, and, and, you know, get started. Uh, but definitely there, there, you know, it's not just answering the phone. It's having the time to have a consult and have a conversation with them and tell them why they want to use your firm and sell your services. Um, so many small firms are, it's feast or famine, right? Like I'm, I'm busy with a client right now, so I'm not going to spend time trying to get the next new client. And then I'm only going to get desperate when I don't have any work. Um, and that really that inconsistency is what holds you back. That's what keeps you where you're, where, where you're at. And, and if you want to grow, uh, you gotta, you gotta start investing in your firm and, and expanding your team, um, to support, uh, you know, a, a larger volume of business. Yeah, spot on. And I think that a lot of people think that it has to be a full-time person that's working out of your office, but it absolutely does not have to be. There are so many ways to have help in these areas that aren't full-time employees that, you know, you have to bring on and, you know, cover benefits for and all like there's so many services in the legal industry that can help with this. So I think it's really finding the right one for you and just going for it. I think I don't I don't know why so many people are afraid to do that. We were talking about that earlier today is it's just started. It's you know not right. that big of a deal. <laughs> Yeah. And we're big fans of get staffed up and you can go to profitwithlaw.com forward slash get staffed up um, to get, um, I think it's $750 off of your initial fee with them, but they help you with hiring a 40 hour a week virtual assistant. They're international contractors. There's no taxes. There's no, um, it's, it's really inexpensive. It's like $2,000 a month and you get a 40 hour a week employee and they don't come trained 
but they're they they are professionals, right? Like they're they're English speaking. They you know they're able to take your systems, your process, your what you want them to do. You just do a little bit of training, and they can go and run with it. And that's really what you need is you need somebody who can get on the phone with people and and move these leads along um, when you know when you've got the leads coming in. Um, and it's almost like this is where the conversation has to happen because if you're not getting people to your website, then you don't need a lead funnel, right? Like you don't, nobody, if nobody's hitting your website, they're never going to see the free thing you're offering. So if your problem is I'm not getting people to my website, that's a different conversation. Um, and yes, SEO and PPC are two of the ways to get there, but there's a lot of other things you can do to get people to your website. Once they're on your website, what's happening next? And that's really what we're trying to solve right now is like, how do I get somebody from being on my website to becoming a client? And it, if I just have book a consult here and they're not quite ready to book a consult, I lose them. And that's where this lead funnel is so is so powerful. But you got to have the pieces in place to get them from there to becoming a client. Otherwise, what are we doing? Um, so really great conversation. Uh, I'm guessing because we're we're really out of time. We got to wrap this up. I'm guessing that people can contact you and you can get this set up for them on their website. Is that is that accurate? Absolutely. So this is a service that we've added on this year, um, you know, with the funnels, building ebooks, all of that we can do here in house. And um, we're continuing to add on as we're, you know, finding out what more and more clients need. Cause, you know, we really, as you know, we were talking about, I think, you know, before we got on, we were just like, who else is doing this in the legal space? And it's such a need. And it just kind of was a natural fit where we were like, let's just go with it. And so um, as we've been doing it this past year, we've really been building it out and expanding. So if there's something that someone's, you know, not hearing that they're like, hey, I think this would be cool. Like, let's chat about it. Because I think we're in such a fun phase right now within this service that there's so many ways that we can continue to grow in this and we can work together to make that happen. Awesome. Yeah. I didn't realize that you guys also do like you write the ebook or you do the the free PDF, whatever it is they're giving out. Um, that's really cool because one of the things that our audience is listening to is like, well, this is a great idea, but I don't have the time for this. I'm not going to, I don't understand the technicals. I'm not going to do this. I'm, I don't even know what to write about. Right. Um, so the fact that you can just come in and say, okay, what's your practice area? What do you do? Who's your target market? Okay, perfect. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to write this ebook. We're going to make this quiz. We're going to do this thing and we're going to, and we'll, we'll set it up for you on your website and here you're good to go. Um, and I'm assuming you write the email sequences too that come after. Yeah, that, I mean, honestly, it's probably one of the most fun things that we get to do as an agency. Like it's so creative. It involves our entire team copywriting, design, social, you know, email marketing, um, you know, and the, the great thing too, is once we produce this one piece of content, it's different than having to approve like a social calendar every month or an SEO piece, you know, every single month, um, you get this high piece of quality, you know, high quality piece of content that is evergreen that lives on your website. And now you have an email sequence that can just run in perpetuity. Um, and then you get to make adjustments and optimize it, you know, so you get to change things like the advertising that you do for the ebook on social, you get to change the way you position it, you know, in social media, um, it just gives you so many things to leverage that you didn't have before. And I would say for us, like the process of creating these is super collaborative, um, clients have loved it. And, uh, like April said, we're exploring other funnel types. So webinars, white papers, PDF checklists, um, those are all things that we're we're currently doing ourselves. And so we're trying to bring that to the market for, for small and solo law firms. Awesome. I love it. So how do people get in touch with you uh, if this is something that they want to do? Yeah, so they can go to our website, nomosmarketing.com. And there's, you know, plenty call to actions and chat features where you can get in touch with Bree. Um, she is our business de business development manager. And so um, people can contact her there, sign up on her calendar, um, or just shoot her an email and chat that way. Awesome. Uh, April and Tyler, it was uh, great having you back. A wonderful conversation. Um, and I feel like 
there's never enough time for us to to <laughs> to talk about this stuff. Uh, so I'm sure that we'll be having you back again in the future. Uh, uh, as you mentioned, you know, this is the number one question you're having with your clients. I can tell you the number one question I have with my clients is how do I get more clients? So um, quality, not quality. They want clients. Um, they want to continue to grow. Um, and ultimately, you can't hire additional people if you don't have clients to fill their plate. Uh, so we got to get that marketing engine going. We got to have a system and a process in place to make that happen. Um, and this is just another tool, another another uh, weapon in the arsenal uh, to to get your firm in front of more clients, uh, get the attention of more clients, get them interested in you, uh, you know, versus somebody else, uh, as you know, as you mentioned. Uh, when you get a refer direct referral from a friend, family, things like that, you, you got a leg up. It's a lot easier to, to to get that client to close that sale. But when you start to to go beyond that and you start to outgrow uh, those direct introductions, um, that's when you really need to be on top of your game. You need to present a good, solid case to somebody to say, "Hey, this is why you want to work with us." Um, and that's really where the power comes in. With, with you know, with something like this, where you get to in multiple emails uh, highlight your firm and why somebody wants to work with you, uh, you know, make the case for it. And then by the time you get them on the phone, half the work is done already. It's just a matter of answering their questions and, and, and being really nice to them, make them feel really good. And then you get them to sign on as a client. So, um, love this conversation folks, check out, uh, Nomos marketing. We'll, uh, link up the website in the show notes. Show notes can be found in your podcast player and the resources section is where you'll find that link, uh, or on our website at profitwithlaw.com. Appreciate you tuning in. We're out of time. So I'm going to skip all the end part the endings that I normally do. Um, subscribe to the show, leave us a rating and review. We love you being here and I will catch you next Thursday where we're back with another amazing guest expert uh, for you. Uh, take care. Enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye.